We want to talk about the right to explanation within the GDPR and its foundations and challenges. So first, I want to give you a short overview about our talk. And first, I will start with the right to explanation within the GDPR. Then I will talk about its purpose, uh, the purpose of the right to explanation and its, uh, the conflict with other rights. And then Johannes will talk about an economical perspective on this right to explanation and its challenges and give you a future perspective. So um, there are three parts in the GPR where you can look for a right to explanation. Um, first of all, you can you have to go in the rights of the data subject subject section, and in Article 13 and Article 14, there's the, first the notification duty, and then in the Article 15, you have the right of access. So in both of uh, in all of the three articles. The wording is, um, at least in those cases, meaningful information about the logic involved shall be provided. So before we start talking about what logic involved could mean, we want to focus here on at least in those cases. So this is referring to the existence of an automated decision-making process. And in the literature right now, the majority says um, the decisions which are supported by ADM systems are also covered under this norm. And we think this is very interesting because right now, as far as we can uh, understand the situation, the data protection authorities in Europe are handling um, this quite restrained. So we think um, as soon as they would become active and change their mind and go with the literature, um, this would have a direct legal consequence because then the data protection authorities would also apply these norms to those cases where we have supported decisions by ADM systems. Um, yeah, the second or third norm where you can look for the right to explanation is Article uh, 22. We already talked about it today, very short. And um, this article is about automated decision, uh, automated individual decision making. And it says that those decisions based solely on automated processing require suitable measures to safeguard the data subjects rights and freedoms and legitimate interests. And yeah, this norm is supplemented by recital 71 sentence four, where it says to obtain an explanation of the decision reached. Um, it's very interesting because this recital is the only part in the, the GDPR where you really can find the word explanation. Um, and this recital also helps us to understand what is really meant by suitable measures within Article 22. So before we go on, I want to show you the differences between Article 13, 14, and 15 and Article 22. And first I will talk about the notification duty in Article 13 and 14, but the same also applies to the right um, of access. So under Article 13 and 14, it's the controller's duty to inform the data subject with regard to the data processing. This is about a duty to explain the logic involved, and this really refers to a global functioning of the decision process. And it's not a duty to explain the individual decision. And this is totally different, uh, different compared to Article 22, because here we have the prohibition of the solely automated decision-making. And one exemption of this um, is our su are suitable measures and such a suitable measure can be the explanation of the individual decision. So France and Hungary, Hungary they specified these suitable measures in a bit more detail. For example, Hungary made um, use of an opening clause and stated that the data controller must at the request of the data subject inform the data subject about the methods and criteria of the decision-making mechanism and have the result verified by a human being. So after having a look at um, these three norms, uh, we have on the one hand, Article 13 to 15, which are more about a global right to explanation. And on the other hand, we have Article 22 in the GDPR, where it points to an individual right to explanation. And as you can see in the huge debate in the literature, it is very unclear whether there is a general global right to explanation. Well, both norms, Article 13, 14, and 15, but also Article 22, indicate that the data controller has to explain something. 
this indication or notion is connecting these two norms. And to find out what the intention of the European legislator was, we want to have a look at the purpose of such a right to explanation and then see what's the aim behind this right. So I will start with the purpose of the right to explanation. At the moment, there's no full-fledged right to explanation for the data subject. But before we start to talk about and asking for more rights of the data subject or duties for the data controller, we want to talk about the purpose of such a right and its limitations due to the conflict with other rights. Um, so the conception of the right to explanation really depends on its purposes. First of all, um, one is the protection of self-determined decisions, which require the data subjects sufficient understanding and knowledge. Because an explanation can lead to more transparency and therefore less possibilities of intransparent uh, decisions. Um, but second, the explanation also can lead to greater social and media awareness of the algorithm's social influence and its functioning. And that is because um, a transparent intermediary can really reduce information asymmetry. So when we have the data subject and the data controller and there's a more transparent information, um, yeah, this asymmetry can be reduced and there's a better balance between those two. And um, yeah, and on a broad scale, um, a right to explanation really fosters a level playing field. And before we go on to talk about the conflicts of the right, um, we want to have a look at the normative scope or what could it be. So as we already said, um, there's no full-fledged right to explanation right now. There are different possibilities what it could mean. So first of all, we could have a direct right to explanation of the individual decision for the data subject. Second, we could also say that we need new competences for the supervisory authorities. And third um, would be a way that we say we need more clear and concise obligation for the developers to comply with privacy by design principles. All of the three possibilities um, need new legislation or at least new jurisdiction from the European Court of Justice. Yeah, but, but as we already mentioned, um, a right to explanation always is conflicting with other rights. So the GDPR itself does not include any written exemption for an information duty on the logic involved. But um, yeah, we always have to look at the legal term and it must be constructed based on its purpose. And the purpose, well, we already talked about it, but it's always a result of the compromise of conflicting rights. So the scope of logic involved can only be determined by assessing the scope of the conflicting rights. And yeah, we wanna especially have a look on software patents, copyright law and trade secrets. And as you can already see trade secrets, um, I think, or we both think is the biggest conflict on the most important, not most important, but where we really wanna focus on. But I will start with the software patterns. So um, patterns protect the way of functioning and could therefore counter and write to explanation. Um, and the protection of an algorithm under patent law, well, at least in Europe, it's quite unclear right now. But nevertheless, um, every patent always requires the disclosure of the functioning to be granted. That's because the aim of the patent law is a further developing of the technique. So therefore, disclosure should enable a specialist to understand and rebuild the technique. And the disclosure does not necessarily help the data subject itself, since he or she usually does not have a technical background and they need more information than a specialist would need. So patent law might go hand in hand with the right to explanation, but this really depends on the purpose of the right to explanation. So the right to explanation might go further and require even more information or another kind of information because we need a explanation that's really more detailed than just the information that is disclosed um, at the patent office. So, but all in all, we can say that there is no conflict with patent law and the right to explanation. 
Then the second um, yeah, area we want to focus on is the copyright law. So in Europe, we have the computer program directive and the code in its specific design is protected under copyright law. The, the disclosure of the code is protected, but not the explanation or the technique behind this code. So there's no protection of the ideas or principles which underlie computer program. And since um, we think that the, or I think it can be said that the explanation does not equal the disclosure of the code, there's no protection under copyright law. So copyright law does not help the data controller to prevent the disclosure of an explanation. Yeah, and last but not least, we wanna talk about um, trade secrets. Um, trade secrets are regulated in the trade secrets directive in the EU. And a trade secret is a secret in the sense that it is not generally known among or readably accessible to persons within the circles that normally deal with that kind of information in question. So this definition is very wide and an algorithm or also the algorithm infra infrastructure can be a trade secret. And the consequences of this trade secret protection are very, very strong. So trade secret owners can prevent really any unpermitted access to this. And there are only a few single exemptions um, which are regulated in Article 5 of the directive. And we actually think it's only worth to talk about two of them. So literature A is talking about freedom of information, which refers to journalism. And yeah, as soon as it's not about media, um, this literature is not really, yeah, you cannot um, talk, or it does not really help you. And the second one is literature D, and it says that for the purpose of protecting a legitimate interest recognized by the European Union or national law, um, yeah, but now the question is what is this legitimate interest? And the scope, remains very unclear. So for example, the German legislator has really not probably implemented this exemption by, well, they just um, said that this legitimate interest must also, or it's an extra thing that you have to um, look for when you look for literature A, B or C. So that's not really an extra exemption they built, although the um, directive really is clearly talking about this at this point. And um, yeah, and so um, trade secrets and the right to explanation, they really conflict with each other. So before coming um, to um, the question um, how we could implement such a right to explanation, um, we want to give a quick um, highlight on the economic analysis of such a right. Um, because as we see it, uh, you, you can see the right to explanation as an information access possibility to other competitors. Um, because when contr if controllers are obliged to disclose information on the algorithms in data protection policies, not only the data subject can read such information, but any other competitor as well. And this means that basically, um, especially companies with uh, successful algorithms right now, where maybe the um, trained algorithm trained on the data that only this company has. Um, this algorithm is one of the most or maybe the most valuable asset in uh, the company. And then they have to disclose at least parts of it to the public and thus also to other competitors. And that's why we think that a right to explanation cannot or must not only be seen from a data subjects perspective but also from an antitrust law perspective. And it basically serves as an indirect um, right to information for other competitors, which you cannot uh, really prevent. And this is particularly important because um, the market in the digital economy is often an informa information market. It's about selling or pricing information. And um, without regard to absolute rights in this information, it can only be priced and sold on a market if it's factually exclusive, meaning that not everyone has direct access to it because then 
everyone could use it at the same time and um, gain the the use he uh, they want from it, and thus um, you cannot price it anymore to your clients. Um, and the right to explanation basically redistributes information without regard to market mechanisms, without pricing mechanisms. Um, and this could mean that um, the, the incentive which is given by the market, which is given by the idea that um, information can be priced and sold only to your clients, this incentive to invest in better or more information um, can be decreased. Um, so it's basically a discussion um, which goes around the intellectual property rights um, domain uh, for a long time between the, the idea of giving investment incentives by uh, monopolizing information or at least holding it factually exclusive and increasing the shared use of information and thus giving possibly more beneficial uses to more people than uh, before. So with this in mind, there are several challenges ahead um, for implementing such a right to explanation. And um, foremost, there is the question of what explanation actually means in talking about such a right to explanation. And this is directly connected um, with the question um, who actually shall be targeted by such a right? And then what technical depth such an explanation should have. And as we talked a lot already about um, the data subject and also the GDPR um, intends to protect the data subject by giving such an explanation, we think that um, basically the normal data subject um, who um, is not completely proficient in understanding how algorithms work, um, who um, is not uh, a domain expert, um, they have to understand um, or they have to um, receive an explanation which is really helpful to them. Um, and this means that um, the explanation cannot be um, like it would be for a domain expert um, really uh, specified, but it must be in a way that it really helps the data subject. Um, and this gets us um, to the next challenge, which is directly linked to it, which is the technical challenge of actually explaining algorithms. Um, and this has become a huge issue, which is uh, why the domain of explainable AI has largely increased uh, recently. And basically, the whole problem is that there are intrinsically interpretable functions, which means that a human can completely understand how a decision um, was made and can completely reconstruct it, not by reverse engineering it, by, but really by just rebuilding it. Um, however, these functions can lack in accuracy compared to black box models, which is why we use black box models, which have more complexity, more dimensions to make a decision in the end. But this also leads to the problem that we as a human cannot anymore recreate the decision from scratch to 100%, which is why we are forced to use uh, reverse engineering to try to recreate the decision by using its outputs, using statistics, and trying to, to understand what is important and what is less important um, to the algorithm to make its decision. And by doing so, um, we are sometimes um, explaining a model by another model, which always leads to less complexity. And this all means that um, we cannot really right now give an explanation which to 100% explains a decision of an algorithm. However, it is possible with a given error rate to um, show what factors are the most important, what features are the most important for a decision. And we think that this decision, even if it may not be 100% correct, can still help a data subject, as it is a lot more than it has right now, because right now it just does not understand at all. And 
like an, an more, more information on the functioning of an algorithm is already more than we have right now, which is why we think that the goal does not have to be um, a hundred percent uh, explanation for the data subject. Um, and this is why you could think that, well, maybe uh, it's easily done, but then there's at least um, in the end, the political challenge and the Schrems II judgment where the ECJ decided that the privacy shield decision of the European uh, Commission to allow the data transfer to the US um, was, uh, was held in compliant uh, with uh, the uh, GDPR. Well, there is the judgment, but data is still transferred to the US um, all the time and it did not stop. And this is, of course, because stopping the data transfer um, would mean, first of all, huge geopolitical uh, consequences between the EU and the US, and also huge economical um, consequences, which are directly linked uh, with that. And that basically shows us that the law has its borders and it can become a political question um, when the economical success of, of, of countries and of, of their economies are linked to legal decisions, extraterrestrial ter um, legal decisions. Um, and we think that with the right to explanation, something like that could happen as well if it is really enforced in a way that it forces successful, successful companies to disclose their information to, um, to other competitors basically then as well, to competitors in the EU forces uh, companies to give up some of the economical advantage and by that maybe reducing the economical and political powers of countries. And this is why we think that even if the right to explanation is a really good idea, some governments um, are likely to, to fight against it if it lowers their political and economical influence. And so to give a perspective on such a right, there are first of all, um, a lot of technical challenges and the question, what an explanation is, how an explanation can be done technically and um, how it should look like is a really complex question. And we think that uh, you should split the right, basically. There should be one right to explanation for the data subject where you do not need the 100% explanation um, and you do not need to recreate the um, decision completely. But even giving some information to the data subject to understand better how an algorithm works is a huge step forward uh, compared to where we are at right now. And then if we split it, a second part could be a more technically demanding explanation, which is given in private audits to um, domain experts who work for a supervisory authority who are not allowed to disclose that information. And they can then look in detail at the algorithms, trying to understand them, working hard to, 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 to gain a really good and almost 100% explanation of the algorithm and yeah, trying to find out maybe if it's discriminatory, um, if it is, uh, if, if there are political dangers in using it and so on. And for that new competences uh, would have to be created for the supervisory authorities. Um, and then uh, as we already talked about it, the political challenge is still there and it will be a hard fight to um, fight against the combination of missing political will and the trade secret protection that companies um, um, enjoy. But we still think that it is really useful as the possibility of control for a data subject, understanding how they are influenced and and as we already talked in this conference a lot about not uh, algocracy, but democracy and um, not giving up the idea that humans control algorithms, 
and humans as a democra democ democratic society and not as uh, techno-economical companies who are not democratically or directly democratically um, legitimized. Um, this is all in the idea of a right to explanation to give more transparency, which is absolutely necessary in our opinion. And last but not least, you could think about other domains where an explanation could be a good idea. And our idea was that if the right to information has an economical factor, then why not <clears throat> implement it as a real <clears throat> right to information access in the antitrust law for companies um, who, unless such a right would be given, um, would have not enough market power, the gap would become too big and monopolistic behavior was too likely to happen. Um, and then based on the idea of Cynthia Rudin, who um, said that there are a lot of models um, where you, uh, a lot of scenarios where you do not need a, white, a, a black box model, but you can use a white box model instead and you gain an accuracy, which is high enough to reach your goal, actually, which you want to reach in this scenario. We think that controllers should be um, required to, to justify why they actually need to use a black box model. And if they're not able to do so, then, well, they shouldn't use it. And we think that this also could lead to more transparency as we then would maybe have more white box models than we have right now. And so uh, with, this, uh, with these remarks, we thank you for your attention and uh, yeah, curious for your questions.